Hello everyone, this is Mr. Jackson, and today we're going to be moving forward in our Concept 3 discussion of the basics of anatomy. We're going to be covering our body planes or sections and our body cavities. So, in order to study the human body, we would normally section off along these flat surfaces portions of the body, right? And they give us certain viewpoints of our internal structures. Um, and we call these planes. And we're going to look at the three most commonly used ones. Up at the top here in pink, we have our sagittal plane. This is a vertical plane that's going to divide the body into left and right sections. If it's going to give us equal left and right, because it's in the middle straight through our midline, we call that a mid-sagittal plane. But if it is going to section anywhere that's not that exact center, that midline of the body, we call that a parasagittal plane. Okay, So both fall in that category of uh, sagittal. Okay, Frontal, or coronal, we'll usually just use frontal, that is a vertical plane as well, but it's going to divide the body into front and back. Right, so it's going to be anterior and posterior sections. This is very common for uh, x-rays and MRIs. Um, and then our last uh, plane is going to be our transverse plane. This is the only horizontal one. And this is going to divide the body into superior and inferior. So what is above and what is below. Okay, These are really helpful for um, assessing movement along these planes. This is really helpful for medical imaging as we'll discuss several uh, examples as we move forward. But these are our three that we want to definitely have in mind and have available as we move forward. And now we're getting into our body cavities, right? So we can typically divide the body into two major subdivisions of cavities. And we will start with what we have in green here on that dorsal or posterior side, and that's our dorsal body cavity, okay? So this is part of your axial portion of the body, and this is ultimately going to encase our bony structures for protection, and those bony structures are protecting our very fragile nervous system organs. So this dorsal body cavity will include your cranial cavity, which holds the brain, okay, so that's inside your skull, and then it will also include your spinal cavity, which is going to obviously house your spinal cord within those bony vertebrae that are all there to protect that very fragile and essential spinal cord. And then we have on our front side or ventral side, we have that ventral cavity as well. Um, this is the part that basically is less protected but allows for more mobility. Okay, so our visceral organs, we'll go into that as we move forward, but our visceral organs can be found here. Um, so this is going to be stuff like your heart, your lungs, and all of your digestive uh, system organs. And then um, we've got this sectioned into, in pink here, we got our thoracic cavity, which holds the heart and lungs. This is going to be protected by your ribs and all of your muscles in your chest. So very important uh, visceral organs. We want to keep those well protected by bony and muscular structures. Your pleural cavities are what hold your lungs. Your pericardial within um, what we call the mediastinum, don't, don't worry about that too much yet, but that pericardial, anytime you see cardia or cardio, that's referring to your heart and it's also going to contain your esophagus and trachea. And then finally we've got your abdominopelvic cavity here, which has your abdomen and your pelvis. You can see where those are isolated in that diagonal cross-section as well. So real quick, a little more about this abdominopelvic. It does house the abdomen and the pelvis. In your abdominal cavity, this is where you're going to find your stomach, your intestines, along with your spleen and liver. Okay, there are other organs, but those are the main ones, the large ones that we can find in that cavity. And then you have your pelvic cavity, which is going to hold your bladder, some of your reproductive organs, and the rectum. This is ultimately all going to be protected by your pelvis. Okay? And within this abdominopelvic cavity, we often see that uh, you can see here in the bottom right corner, um, you can see that it's often divided into four quadrants. So it's going to be like right upper, left upper, right lower and left lower so that if we need to get a little bit more specific in terms of describing the location of something such as an injury, we can really specify what quadrant within that cavity I can find whatever might be in question. 
Some other quick cavities that we'll need to know before moving forward. Um, these are usually going to be much smaller. Um, they might even have some external openings, which is cool. Uh, you've got your oral cavity, which houses the mouth. Okay, this is your teeth and uh, tongue as well. You have your digestive cavity, which connects your oral cavity all the way to the rectum. Okay, so this is your entire digestive tract from mouth to anus. Uh, you've got nasal cavity, which is within and behind your nose. Your orbital cavities, which house your eyes. Your middle ear cavities, which have all those little tiny bones that are uh, medial or within uh, towards the midline of your eardrums. And then your synovial cavities, and those are where your joints are located. And we're going to cover those a ton whenever we get into skeletal and muscular. Um, so those are a few other body cavities that are important to know that they're there. And finally, we're going to finish up here with body membranes. Body membranes are what line your cavities. Okay, so these are like those layers, those tissues that line your cavities. Um, and cover the organs within those cavities. Uh, you have a cutaneous membrane. That's just referring to your skin. Uh, this is covering your entire body surface. It's the only dry membrane. You have your mucous membranes, or mucosae for plural, and those are what are going to line all your body cavities that ultimately open to the outside of your body. So like your nose and your mouth, that is what lines those. So any exterior exposure, you have those mucous membranes in place to line those uh, organs and openings. You have serous membranes or serosa. Those are going to line your ventral body cavities that are closed off from the outside, and it's going to also cover many of your internal organs. You have the parietal membrane, which lines the body cavity that these organs are in, and then the actual organs themselves, such as your like, small intestine and your stomach, those are going to have this lining that uh, is called the visceral membrane. So this is what covers your visceral organs. And these serous membranes are often separated by this, what we call serous fluid, which prevents any sort of friction whenever they might slide and shift together, right? So we don't want any sort of friction, which would damage our tissues and organs. So we have this serous fluid that keeps the whole um, environment free of friction, and it's also really good for nutrient exchange uh, between tissues as well. And finally, last term, we've got our meninges. This is specifically referring to the membrane covering the brain and your spinal cord in your dorsal body cavity. Okay, so that is more than enough to go off for now. We've had exposure to all of our body sections and planes, all of our body cavities, and now membranes. And we're going to be referring to these a lot as we go into each of our organ systems. And so it's great to know. And that'll do it for section 2C. And we'll see you at the next one.